the Toad XJ coming along nicely. Rear lift is done. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Welcome back to the Toad. This is going to be a Toad episode three. And I want to get you guys up to speed what we got done so far. Uh, rear lift is done. So uh, let's check this out. We'll uh, see everything that's been uh, done so far. All right, here we go, guys. Up underneath the toad, the rear leaf springs are in. So let's see what we got. Let's start with the outside back. So we got new shackles. These came in the mail. I basically installed everything in the order they came from the Amazon man. So we had to get new shackles. The other ones were shot and disgusting. I reused that factory bolt up there. We got some shackle hardware going on in there. And of course we have a new painted factory leaf spring. This leaf spring was actually from the two door that I chopped in half. It had a nice factory leaf spring. I put in an add leaf and a lift video for XJ and here we go. This is the uh, finished product. Uh, this is the plate from this vehicle. This is the rear sway bar mount for this vehicle. Obviously there is no rear sway bar. The previous owner had removed it. I think I'm gonna put one back because this is gonna be mostly a street driving Jeep with maybe a little bit of beach off-road and I'm gonna want that sway bar. Um, up here, the bump stop, well, that uh, that is rotten so I took that off. I should have done that before I painted this up. Uh, got off some, some little bit of scale, stuff that looked like that and I put on some nice semi-gloss black paint and then I hit it again with some rubberized undercoating to give it that factory look again. Came out alright, uh, but here we go. So yeah, uh, gonna have to get a sway bar. The sway bar mounts to here. I'm glad that these were removed without the bolts snapping off in them because we're gonna put the mounts and the bushings right up there. So yeah, this is the leaf spring. And so far, so good with this. Uh, I have to retorque this when it sits at a ride height. So I bolted it up nice and hand tight, and then we're gonna drop this down and uh, crank everything down. So that is that. Uh, let's go to the brake line right here. This brake line I harvested from a parts XJ because the other one, it actually snapped right about at this uh, mounting point, right at that 3 8 fitting. So this is a semi, semi, uh, sort of new brake line. New to me, it's not rotten, so I'll take it. The brake hose that it bolts into, all right, so we have brake line going into brake hose. This thing up here is just a vent for the rear diff. Uh, this little junction block gets bolted right down and it's hollow, so it vents up. It's actually pretty cool. But it goes up here into the brake line coming from the front. So this is the hose, hose goes back to line. Now, take a gander here at the old one. This is where the old line was snapped and this old hose was pretty crappy. If you can tell from the other Toad videos, when you drop this axle down to work on the lift, it gets pretty extended. And uh, I hate to disconnect these before I do lift work because then you have brake fluid leaking all over. So I don't mind if I stress this out, like 30 bucks at the auto parts store and you could pick up a brand new line to get that out of here. I'm sorry, brand new hose and the hoses actually come from the auto parts store with a little bit of an extension. If you want to do a little lift, they're a little longer. Uh, they also come compatible with your vehicles that have ABS. Your ABS lines could clip on here. This Toad does not have ABS, so that's cool. But that also means that this is compatible with your Dana 35 as well as this Chrysler 8 and a quarter. So yeah, this is the brake hose. That's cool. Uh, this what is this? This is the e-brake line. It looked like it was pulled out of the diff right from the pumpkin up the top. Uh, it's probably rusted out, so I'm just going to leave this here for a minute. It's not hurting anybody. 
But here we go, this is a rough country shock. This is good for stock ride height all the way up to three inches. And it bolts right up into the shock mount up here. Now, uh, the shock, oh, look at that. Uh, some factory wrapper got stuck up in here. Uh, when I pulled out that little uh, little plastic and let the thing extend, <laughs> stuck. Whatever. Anyway, um, factory hardware usually breaks off. Those are 13 millimeter bolts. You crank those out, they snap off because they're rusted into the frame of the Jeep. And how to do that, let's see. Here we go, got my Husky air gun from Home Depot. Just plug it into your little air compressor tank and you shoot out the broken parts of the, the bolt, those little studs that stick up in there. These are the broken knots, one, two. Actually, they almost went according to plan, except for this guy. This guy actually came out, which is really odd. Uh, sometimes you get lucky, but in this case, you want them to break off so you could pop them out. And uh, I think I showed you in the other video, those little uh, forks, they have flag nuts. You weave those through the frame of the Jeep. Through these little gaps, and then you could get your hardware on those nuts. If you could see, yeah, one sticking out. That's, that's the little handle right there in the middle of the screen. Got the handle that helps you get these in. This new set I got, it was the fastest ever. I put both these shocks in in about 20 minutes, which is like a record for me. First time I ever did an XJ lift, its process took me all day trying to get nuts and bolts and wrenches through there. It's a nightmare. These new parts are a lifesaver. Oh, one other thing that I ordered, I did order a U-bolt. And when I say a U-bolt, I mean to say one U-bolt. It looked like a pack of four on Amazon and I only got one. The picture was very deceiving. It never said it came individually. It was like $27 for just one U-bolt. And when I waited a week for it to come in the mail, well, that was only one. And you can't lift a Jeep with only one U-bolt. So what I did was <laughs> I found this set. It's exactly the same as what I ordered. I got this maybe 15 years ago. I had taken these off uh, XJ project that I'm currently working on, Beach Jeep, if you know, you know, <laughs> it's still in the works. Don't worry guys, it's coming, I promise. But uh, these are used U-bolts, cleaned them up, hit them with some paint, and now they are on the toad. So that's the U-bolts. Uh, yeah, we did order a sway bar. I'm gonna have to touch up some of this rust because that's ugly, but so far, this is the lift and it's looking pretty good let's check out these wheels all right so we got some falcon all-terrain tires not too bad they came in the size i wanted we got 30 by nine and a half by 15s it's kind of hard to get these tires because i don't think 15 inch rims are too popular uh, with 30s usually people that have 15s on Jeeps go with bigger bigger tires for off-roading and these are kind of a small Size for the road and uh, I think they might be discontinuing the size or at least some brands But anyway, we got them in Falcons and uh, I picked the size because I think it'll go perfect with this lift As you can see we got this one on and it really does look sweet I was able to clean up these factory wheels and how I did that was I got myself some rim cleaner. I got the stuff that's safe for painted wheels. I went ahead and pre-wet this rim. Then I went ahead and soaked it in the Meguiar's rim cleaner. You gotta let it sit for a couple minutes. And I used my bristle brush. Scrubbed it up real good. The chemicals did all the work. Did you use the stuff with the tiny scrubbing bubbles? They clean the bowl so you don't have to. <laughs> and then power wash it away. And man, it came out fantastic. So as you can see, uh, they are really in good shape. They were able to be balanced without having the ugly balancing weights on the rim. I uh, love the way that looks nice clean factory look uh, i didn't even have to repaint these wheels they came out great that's it boy get in there nice and deep line. so while we're back here i drilled out the busted bracket for the rear bumper end and i extracted a good one 
from a parts jeep and these just lay right in here and I'm gonna rivet this one back in after I paint it of course uh, speaking of painting oh man check out this header panel it is restored uh, I fixed it and I painted it. Unfortunately, I painted the wrong color. That's a different story. Let me tell you how I fixed it. So first I got all my pieces of front header panel in place and I taped them all together with some masking tape. I got it in the right shape. I taped it all together as a single piece. I actually had to go back and re-chop up with the cutoff wheel some of the pieces that didn't seem to fit right, but the tape brought it all back together, and then I made a little jig with some wood and some clamps to keep it straight, mixed up some Bondo. Once that was all dry, I flipped it back around and I used regular Bondo to just seal up all the little holes and cuts in the front, sanded this baby down with 400 grit sandpaper, sprayed it all down with filler primer, Gave it another quick sanding and then used some factory Mopar paint. Unfortunately, the paint I got, oh man, this is a rookie mistake right here. Check it out. I got the bright silver metallic, the PS2, and ah, I, I love this stuff. But unfortunately, the paint I wanted, I, I put it in the search browser for Amazon. I put it PS5 Silverstone Metallic. And uh, this came up in the search. I, I didn't realize that this wasn't the right stuff. I ordered this because um, I, I, I like the duple color. It comes out great. And uh, I got four cans of the wrong stuff. Uh, sucks for me. I didn't realize it till after I laid down a whole can of paint. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to eat it and wait for the new paint to arrive I had to get it from a different place uh, so this Jeep is PS5 Silverstone and it is not bright silver metallic this color is actually on my WJ the Grey Hornet so I got all this stuff to paint and I got a whole bunch of wrong paint so that's gonna hold me up a little bit no one to blame but myself it really sucks so yeah all the bumper ends the header panel that's all gonna have to wait but while we're talking about the header panel Let's check out the nose. All right, here we go. Brand new AC condenser. This might be the key to having AC and the toad. All the rocks from the road will go through the grill and beat up this AC condenser. And uh, if this is the weakest link of the Jeep, then I eliminated it, fixed it, fixed the problem. Maybe we'll have AC if we put some Freon in this stuff. But here is the header panel bracket, the uh, radiator support bracket. Now, under here, this little guy, this nut bolts into rubber bushings. I probably should have showed you guys. It's got little rubber bushings under here, and there it is. Look at that. It's held onto the radiator bracket by little 8 millimeter nuts. All right, a lot of times those will snap off and disappear. Your radiator will flop around. Uh, also, what happens is uh, these nuts rip right off and then the radiator really isn't attached to the Jeep at that point. It's just kind of floating and sandwiched in. Uh, all these brackets are held in together by small little hardware. So uh, I took this all apart and I found all the factory hardware for it, painted it up, and this is where I'm at now. Radiator is firmly in place with a new AC condenser. I painted up this bracket too. Uh, waiting for my hardware to finish tumbling and then I'll paint that. I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, I restored this hardware. I think I showed you that this one was broken off. So I retapped this hole. I also ground this one down smooth. Look, you can see I hit this with some touch-up paint <laughs> and it doesn't match. Oh man, I really got to repaint that. So yeah, so I had to re-drill this hole. And then I took out one and two of these fender bolts, pushed this bolt through, tack welded it on, and there we go. I have factory threads that will uh, match these, and that's really... Oh yeah, this, this was a little problem. This was creased in right here. This is... Let's see what color. This is red, if you can see it. <laughs> Pulled this from a parts jeep, bolted this back down, and... That's nice and straight. It almost punctured 
this line, but it didn't. Thankfully, that's intact. This little bolt was pushed in there. It's probably from the same accident. I'm not sure. Uh, I still have to address this push in. I think I'm just going to chop out a piece of frame from the other Jeep and just uh, overlay it. And then it'll plate it with uh, three sections of steel. It'll be nice and strong. Nothing wrong with that. But everything is looking good and just the header panel is holding me up. So I think today I'm going to remove this battery tray. I have a battery bat battery. I have a better battery tray in stock to put in there. And what else am I going to do? Oh yeah, I have to do the diff cover still. <laughs> still didn't get to do the diff cover, but I want to try to lift this Jeep today. I want to finish this Jeep and have it up on all four tires. We have the pucks to lift it. And I got this beautiful Rough Country adjustable track bar. I love these because they come with a sleeve that you can adjust. So if you want to push your axle in and out, left or right, uh, underneath the Jeep, you don't have to remove the bolts and twist it all around. You can adjust it by turning this little sleeve and then you just clamp it down with these little compression clamps and all is right with the world. All right, let's see if there's anything else we could talk about. Oh yeah, power steering issue. I still have to do that. <laughs> oh, here we go. This, this piece of crap. A, uh, the bleeder screw broke off in the brake drum. Uh, God, I hate brake drums. It's a shame we're gonna have to do some brake work on a drum. Oh, lost it. Oh, here it is. Uh, uh, but I didn't convert it to discs. If you wanna see a disc conversion, then check out the Rec J videos. Uh, that's that. Okay, here we go. We got tires. We talked about that. Oh, here's an 0630 head. Um, that's gonna get sold. Oh, check this out, guys. This is my new bumper. Yay! We got a new front bumper, and we got a lower valence from another Jeep. Gonna have to put this together. I do need a vacuum ball. I have a vacuum ball somewhere. Um, but yeah, we got a new bumper, so that's exciting. That's gonna have to wait for paint also. And here is the hardware tumbling. This is what I was talking about, guys. Check this out. There. This has been tumbling for days and it is rust free. Look at that. Here. These are those uh, radiator support bracket, these Torx bolts. It's gonna knock out this rust, not rust, it's dust. It's dust from crushed walnut medium. And what I do is put this in these little holes right there. I'll hit it with some brake clean, get any oils or residue off, and then it gets a coat of black paint. And that's it. Easy restoration process. Sometimes I'll start out with the industrial purple degreaser. I'll knock off any grease. Uh, sometimes I'll throw it in the evapo rust, get some rust off that way. Other times I will just throw it in this thing and set it and forget it. And I got, oh look, <laughs> found a socket. All this beautiful clean hardware. So this will go back on the Jeep when the time comes. So that's gonna do it, I think, for episode three of the Toad. Toad, 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 toad. So let me know if you need to see anything and I will try to put more effort and more detail into it. All right guys, so that is the toad at the end of episode three. Hopefully we'll get the front lift on today. Uh, we got a busy weekend coming. That'd be great to, uh, to get that done with and uh, I'll check in with you guys on episode four and we'll go over all the good toad stuff. And that's gonna do it. All right guys, thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, share this video, comment down below. I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.